we're off to Great Barrier today. The conditions look fantastic. The forecast is really good. We've got light winds all day and onshore winds. So on the inside of Great Barrier, we should get some good shelter. We're leaving nice and early because it's a big trip in my small boat from Omaha. Just sitting on the side of the boat here, contemplating life. About to hop into the cold water. Straight in, we're just going to work this weed edge. And I'm just swimming along the weed edge trying to identify a good spot to start. Done a couple of dives and I've found this nice rock on the bottom here. I can just see it from the surface. It's about 18 metres deep, 20 metres deep. And I make a dive on it to see what's down on here. On the way down you can see there's lots and lots of bait. And the tide is starting to really, really rip. It's looking really good and it's not long until jackpot. There's a Terekee sitting right there and there's another one to the right of the frame as well. I apologise ahead with the GoPro setup for the next few clips. GoPro's a little low and I always try and hold my head down when I approach fish to keep my profile nice and small. Back on the surface, I continue swimming into the current. I don't stop and muck around and focus on um, killing my fish. I make sure I'm swimming at the same time so I stay on the same spot. I quickly call over my dive bait to get back down there right on the same spot again as there was more Terekee there. She wastes no time as she gets down towards the bottom. You want to be careful not to drift too far back in the tide which is a mistake lots of people make. She managed to get a nice big Terek in the exact same spot before they get too spooky. Same again, I'm constantly swimming. Whenever I'm breathing up, diving on these weed edges where there's lots and lots of tide, I don't stop and take too long to breathe up. I want to get back down there and spend more time on the bottom. If I stop swimming too much, I'll drift far too back along the weed edge onto the wrong spot. On the way down, I've noticed that I've actually drifted too far back. I want to be right up the front of this reef here. So I'm going to unnecessarily waste a lot of oxygen trying to get myself to the front of this rock. It's not ideal and it's pretty poorly planned. So I'm swimming on an angle here to try and get into a good spot where I think the fish are going to be. You can see with the, with the kelp here the tide is absolutely humming. And the further back we fall in the tide, the more the current's going to push and it's going to make it even more difficult to dive. Unfortunately the Terekee keep darting in from behind me and it's really hard to spot with all the Demozels. I'm waving my gun around far too much and I make a lunge and they spook off. You see even though not very deep, any dives that I'm getting over two minutes long start getting pretty taxing on the body. I get straight back down there, I spend maybe about three minutes on the surface. Often a decent rule with your dives, especially if you're diving more towards your limits, is to spend at least twice the time on the surface than you do on your dive. And then do my best impression of a stingray. Throwing up the sand, trying to get the curiosity of all the Terekee around me. Same thing again, apologise for the bad GoPro mount, um, I just needed to tilt it back a little further. With this commotion I'm trying to attract the Terekee that are right on the edge of the vis. They're sitting out of the sand, I'm trying to entice them to come in. As mentioned, it pays them, especially when there's lots of current like this and you've got to keep swimming on the surface and don't have time as much time to rest. You want to spend the minimum time on the bottom. But unfortunately for a change, the Terekee are actually quite spooky and they weren't that keen on coming close to me. Straight back to the surface and same again, although you can't see my fins, I'm finning as soon as I hit the surface. It's not a great way to recover from your dives, but it is necessary to make sure I dive this place effectively. I'll have a limited amount of dives swimming into this ripping current and doing these dives, especially with short surface interval. Fortunately it's not real deep, it's between sort of 17 and 20 metres, so I can recover reasonably quickly from my dives, but it will accumulate and make it more and more difficult for me to get long bottom time the more dives I do here. 
back on the bottom you see the demons hours are really really thick and I'm in that good spot again I just shot that Tiraki before and I've spotted this Tiraki here I'm just gonna drift down and try and get a little bit lower and hide behind this piece of kelp That's me done and dusted. I've got three Tiraki, and with the tide picking up stronger and stronger, it's getting more and more difficult to stay in the area. Same again, probably a necessary longer dive. It, it'd be better to keep them under two minutes. We head back in shallower, and my dive buddy manages to find a whole pile of Tiraki, and maybe 12 meters of water that are not spooky at all, and there's no current. So we spend all that time out a little bit deeper, swimming into that current and she manages to find a really nice spot with all these big Tiraki just quietly parked up that aren't spooked at all. Tiraki can be funny like this especially in the upper North Island where we don't see them as much as you do down south. Often they'll like a kelpy sort of area and like sheltering under the kelp stalks. You see these ones are not actually that keen to spook off and they want to hang around. My dive buddies managed to get a really really good sized Tiraki. At 1.2 kilos it's a really good size for this sort of Hauraki Golf. We tell Dan that Sophie's managed to find these fish and he comes and joins the party to try and get a couple. This makes for a lot easier work getting the Tiraki as opposed to out in the current as they swim right up to the end of Dan's spear. Same again, they're just pretty happy sheltering under these kelp stalks and don't want to swim off. Back down on the bottom, he's just going to take one more of these Tiraki before we leave them be. Same again, really easy approach, lying on the bottom there. Very, very friendly these ones. Happy with our effort out on the weed edge, we've all got a few fish. We can't help but head in shallows and see if we can find a few snapper. Great Bear has some fantastic country for hunting snapper all around the island. And it makes really great for snapper snooping. I found these nice big boulders here so I'm just making my way up to them. And we're going to sneak over and see what's on the other side. As I head over it, I see I'm actually a little bit far down the ledge where I shouldn't be. I should be off to the right there. So I'm just going to shimmy back over the rock and then try a little bit further along the edge. My second attempt here, I come over and where I think the snapper should be, but when I peer off to my left, I spot a small snapper a little bit off to my left in between my first two dives. Same again, I'm trying to push myself back so I don't make too much commotion and try one last time. I come over where I think the snapper is, but it's already started moving off. It was quite hard to spot in that dark bottom there. I'm just going to take a lunge and see if I can get close to it, but it ducks under the kelp and does a Houdini and disappears. In shallow I find a really nice spot again, full of all these blue mau mau. There is a bit of surge here, so I'm just trying to sneak over just quietly and see if there's a snapper with them, but I get washed over and spook everything. Here's looking pretty good, there's a heap of demoiselles on top of the rock, all that salp there, the snapper at this time of year will come and feed on all that salp, so it can be a good sign. As I'm sneaking over I'm just trying to see which is the most optimum point to come over. A spot on the right hand side there, there's a lot of drummer, so I'm going to sneak over there and see what's happening. The drummer is swirling around, 
sort of mind their own business and I've spotted there's a couple of snapper with them. Drummer can be a pain sometimes as they scare snapper away, but other times, if they're acting docile, sometimes the snapper will just join in the school and they'll become docile also. Fortunately, there's a dumb snapper here that just pretends like it's a drummer and swims right up to the end of my gun. With a lucky stone shot, I'll try and pull that back over as there was other snappers still there and sometimes they won't be bothered if there's less commotion with a good shot. With our limited time in the day, Dan calls me over and he's found a fantastic cray crack. This was just a metre below the surface, right up in shallow, and was full of really good red crays. They had nowhere to go, and this whole crack was full of them, and all around in the area. There's one lone packy in that crack there hanging out with them. We managed to just grab a couple, and then we just let them be. We just had one more thing to tick off the list, and that was getting some scallops before we head home. As soon as the boys got in the water, they notified me that there was a couple of bronze whalers that kept spooking them by swimming underneath them when they're on the surface, as well as buzzing them on the bottom. We sort of saw it more as a joke than anything to be worried about, so I jumped in with the camera and thought, well, I'll try and film one swimming around us. The bed was covered in scallops. We got plenty of scallops on each dive. And of course, as soon as I got in with the camera, the shark made itself scarce. Until right at the end of the dive here as I'm loading up with scallops, it buzzes past my head, but my slow reactions, I only just really catch the tail end of it as it's swimming off. That makes scallop diving a little bit more interesting than just picking up scallops off the bottom. That concludes a big day. We've managed to dive the weed edges and get some teriki, koharu, trevally and other good snacks as well as picking up a couple of snapper and plenty of craze and then finishing off with a heap of scallops. We head back on flat seas and Paul Smiles says it all.